Central PVTV from Rome, from G7 site event organized by NL Foundation, Rest for Africa, and EU Africa Energy Partnership. And we are together with uh, uh, Jeremy, who is uh, representing the utility in Kenya. How do you like the sun in Italy? Is it so sunny like Kenya? Uh, it's fair today, a bit cold, but you can compare with Kenya. Definitely, we are more sunny in Kenya. <laughs> okay, so you are sunny. In the, uh, you are coming from the sunny country, from Africa, from the sunny continent, uh, but still, you are not using as much solar energy. You are not using this, you know, uh, the richness from the sun that you have to empower your society. How do you see the development of solar energy in Kenya? Yes, uh, I think one major challenge has been the cost of solar in the past, which has been too high. But we really appreciate that the cost has come down uh, significantly. And now I think it is trying to make economic sense for large power plants. Uh, the government in Kenya are interested in bringing down the cost of power. Uh, currently, we are around uh, average 14 US cents, uh, but the government wants 10 and below. Mm -hmm. So this is um, a the target. initiative so that uh, to attract the industries and ensure that when we have cheap power, we have our cost of production is low, and this can spur the economy. You can have more jobs. We can attract, produce more rather than importing more. Mm -hmm. So the cost of power is very critical. And uh, I think now there is also a lot of goodwill uh, to do uh, renewables. And uh, the government is very keen also in uh, promoting renewables energy in the country. And um, we are happy to really see that uh, there are also a lot of interest. Here in Italy, so many investors are interested. I have met a number of them who are doing a lot of initiative within our country, Kenya and uh, Africa and East Africa and uh, Africa. And this is very impressive. This kind of partnership we need to see how to grow uh, because we need to electrify Africa. It, we, the demand for electricity is fast. And bring the wellness to the country. Yes. And uh, you know, once we have power, we can empower people also to really do some uh, development initiatives which can transform their lives, you know, enhance their living. So today you made some announcement, yes, related to Rest for Africa. Could you tell us more about this? Yes, uh, we have started a partnership with Rest for Africa, and Rest for Africa, their main goal is to see how to spur the growth of renewables mm -hmm. in Africa as an initiative towards uh, electrification of the continent. And uh, so last year we met and... Uh, a follow-up earlier this year, we have agreed to, to address two main areas. One, uh, we are undertaking a study uh, which is supported by Race for Africa mm -hmm. on integration of renewables into the national electricity grid. Mm -hmm. And um, it, the, the reason is we need this, there is always a worry. We have a lot of interest to develop a lot of renewables. What we know, solar and wind, are not very stable. And uh, they solar is stable? <laughs> During the day, fairly, but you see at night it's gone. Uh, wind fluctuates again and varies. So uh, we have a worry that if we, what, to what extent do we need to put in renewables on the grid without uh, affecting the stability of the grid? So we hope that this study is going to come up with a lot of lessons for us to get to understand how much, how our stability of the grid is and how much renewables we can take aboard. So that will give us confidence in uh, how much renewables we can keep adding into the grid. So that's one. And this will inform uh, policy decisions in the ministry, in the government as well, through in the Ministry of Energy. Uh, the other one is setting up an off-grid academy. And... Um, or we call it microgrid or off-grid academy. We now, our target in Kenya is to uh, electrify 100% of the country by 2020. And to do this, for sure, we know we must embrace off-grid. Mm -hmm. And there are already initiatives. There is a project World Bank is developing to fund a number of off-grid stations mm -hmm. coming on board, maybe towards the end of the year. 
And, uh, but the issue again is uh, capacity building. This will involve uh, generate, uh, diesel, uh, solar, wind, integrated together. Mm -hmm. You see, we need to build capacity of technician to be able to manage this properly. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to manage to, uh, capacity to design, proper design, and we need also innovation so that we see uh, the aim is how do we have cost-effective systems which are still reliable. But also afterwards uh, sustainable. Eh? And sustainable, very important. So we need to demonstrate this and we need to do this by building capacity, to getting a lot of knowledge on these uh, technologies. Even batteries, how do you maintain them? What is the, you know, charging, uh, you, you have to understand uh, that when you're operating with batteries, if you are always overdrawing, you affect the life of the battery. These details, knowledge needs to be disseminated so that you have a well-managed and sustainable system to, to, to produce power. And that is the only way people will embrace renewables of course. and off-grid. Of and you can also so, spread this news uh, and this message to other neighboring countries. other neighboring countries, yeah, at least... Kenya, we are a little bit ahead of some of our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And if we, have, we can demonstrate success in Kenya, uh, it can be replicated in many other countries who are, yeah, who are still developing that. So we are very keen in this partnership. And we are already, today, we announced setting up of the Off-Grid Academy. We are asking for partners to support us. And uh, hopefully, before the end of year, we have realized that and start training ne from next year. Yeah, that's awesome. I would like to ask you because uh, we are speaking for the moment about the power, yes? But uh, I think what is also very important and interesting to bring, let's say, electrical mobility to the country. Yes, uh, this is very, very important. For a number of years, I personally mm -hmm. uh, wanted to uh, champion the use of electric vehicles mm -hmm. because one, it's clean especially if you have generation from renewable and you have electric cars, you can be sure that environment is a clean environment. So again, we need to demonstrate that electric vehicle is the cheaper, cheapest option to run. And uh, I believe that um, this is possible. So I am championing starting, have, last week I discussed with my boss, the managing director of Kenya Power, that we need to uh, promote the use of electric people. The reason is KPLC drives this because we need infrastructure to charge the vehicles and it is Kenya Power who can set up those infrastructure. We also need uh, to understand the electric vehicles so that we are able to influence policy. We see the benefits of electric car and how can we enhance and make sure that many people can use this electric car. Do we need to subsidize, have some uh, tax waivers on electric vehicles. So these are the things that I want to champion mm -hmm. and uh, give those policy recommendations to our ministry and discuss uh, so that we quickly embrace electric vehicles. Oh, yes. I want uh, very soon, my next car, I, when I buy, I want to buy an electric car, oh. full, fully electric, so that uh, I am promoting what I'm using. And this will be real uh, and uh, uh, convincing way to promote, to champion the electric vehicles. Exactly. Yeah. So, last question, uh, because the title of today's event was Africa 2030. Yeah? yeah. How do we imagine the sustainable Africa in 2030? So, how do you imagine Africa in 2030, and especially Kenya? How do you imagine Kenya, let's say, if you make this interview 2030, in terms of uh, uh, use renewable energies, the overall wellness of the country, also maybe electric cars? Yes. Um, where we are now, we are facing a number of challenges that we need to create employment for the young people. We need to grow the economy. And one of the important areas the government is focusing is the cost of power. We need to ensure we have low cost of power. That's one thing, uh, which is also sustainable, not only and is reliable. And again, we have a lot of resources, renewable energy resources, that if we exploit locally, it can add more value to us because, uh, and reduce the risk of relying on, let's say, oil, which is, you know, it, it, the, the prices fluctuate and you cannot have 
control of it. So I see that um, we need a lot of innovation and we need to spar out, we uh, use these technologies, develop new technologies which are, can address these challenges. So we need to put a lot of, not only talking about promoting renewables, but bringing innovation, mm -hmm. which can work within the local context. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is very critical for us. And uh, I appreciate that people are interested to come and invest, but the aspect of uh, working together with the community and the local people is very important for the success of this and uh, for sustainability of the partnerships. And uh, together we are stronger. Together we are stronger. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, so. Because this world is very interdependent. And, once, and it's good we are appreciating that. Europe now knows that Africa is critical. Some challenges from Africa now Europe is facing. Enjoy coming together and see how to resolve this is very good for us and for the future. Thank, Thank you so you. much.